Hi everyone, Devin Conway here with my wife Kim Conway. A little bit uncomfortable to do this interview because this time last year I did a super couple interview with Mitchell Santner and I think he probably feels like I'm cheating on him so um, yeah sorry Mitch in advance but this is us. <laughs> uh, originally uh, we we're born in South Africa, Johannesburg the two of us um, and now we currently live in New Zealand Wellington. We've been living in New Zealand for the past six years. We've been friends since 1996, so when we were six years old. And I wasn't the popular girl, so Dev didn't go for me then. But uh, fast forward 10 years from then, we went to university and he tried to ask me out and I got cold feet, so I ran away. So, <laughs> so I left him there. And I went home and didn't speak to him again for the next five years. We were, we were like, no, he was moving away to Durban, so we were like, no, let's just have our friendship is more important. And then five years on, next message I get at work, are you single? And I was like, okay, let's go for coffee. So I didn't um, stick him up this time, but yeah, the rest is history. It was all good. Like, like she said, um, I moved away from Johannesburg. I went to Durban, so um, it wouldn't have been practical or possible for us to actually be with the, each other during that time. So. Um, yeah, it was all good, like, um, you know, we're still friends, you know, kept in touch over Facebook and that sort of thing, so, yeah, when I finally moved back to Johannesburg and our paths crossed, then it gave us that opportunity to um, see each other again. No, no, so my first impression of Kim was I was always a bit scared of her because when I was six years old, she's always been taller than me, so I was a little bit intim intimidated by her height, um, so, yeah. Like she said earlier, probably wasn't sort of her vibe during that time or when we were a lot younger, but um, as we got older, we got closer as friends and that was probably my first impression of Kim. Yeah, Dev was just never around, so I was just not really interested in that kind of guy at that time. I just had friends and just carried on. I was too busy playing sports, you know. Yeah. You'd find me on the sports field, not in the classroom. You know, I think we were just, our paths crossed at the right time. Um, and you know, I was always kind of attracted to her initially, um, and then once we got to know each other better, um, I think that just grew and grew and grew over time. So um, that's probably my initial feeling of how that sort of all unfolded. Yeah, I would agree. I think at the end of the day, we're husband and wife now, but we're pretty much best friends, and that's how we always wanted to start our marriage. So it's been pretty cool to be married to your best friend. It was your house. Yeah, I think I invited her around to my place to have coffee and catch up there. Um, we had a flatmate, so um, yeah, it was nice for all of us to get to know each other better and chill out and just chew the fat and chill. Um, so that was pretty much then. And then I think we went out to a restaurant, like one of the local restaurants nearby, just to grab some food and yeah. it just grew and grew from there. And never got rid of me. <laughs> Well, Dev proposed, and it was in the. We went to a place in the South Island where there was. We were in a log cabin with snow around, and I was busy trying to make a fire while Dev was unpacking the bags. And he was like, "Come sit down," and I was like, "I'm busy, I'm busy." And he's like, "Can you please come here?" And I was like, "I've told you I'm busy." And he was like, "Can you just give me two minutes?" And I was like, "Okay." And I sat there, and he's like. Do you love me? And I was like, oh, just because I yelled at you wasn't mean I was breaking up with you. I didn't expect that. And then got down on one knee and asked. And the rest is history. Luckily she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's never an argument. She just always wins. So <laughs> we just leave it at that. No, we, we, when, we, when we bicker... Um, we just need time apart. We just a little bit of time apart, you know. Like I said, I'm, I'm away from home quite a fair bit, so sometimes distance apart allows us to sort of just, you know, get away from niggly situations or something, and then we're just sort of excited to see each other again when we come back. I couldn't believe that Dev was joining a family team more than just focusing on cricket was quite special knowing for me going, I'm getting married one of the biggest times of my life. My husband's not gonna be there. 
but knowing people around him were actually making an effort to make it even more special because I got to go home to South Africa but earlier and have friends and family around where I thought he missed out on that but knowing he was able to have it here in India with his teammates that made it feel like that was more important than cricket at that time which was really special especially with it being COVID bubbles and so knowing that he got a bit of a special time in our marriage was also really nice. I think my account of that was um, I was firstly shocked because obviously they had organised that whole wedding behind my back and <laughs> I didn't know it was actually going to happen until I arrived at the, the venue and saw how well decorated it was and um, yeah it was just it was a really special night you know I think CSK went all out um, you know it was good to have everyone there not only the teammates my teammates but the support staff the partners and wives of other people so it was a, a real full buy-in from everyone and, and it just made it really special so it was actually a really cool event at the end, end of that night. Should I give the inside information about this sorry? It was not a sorry. <laughs> I didn't know how to do a sorry and everything was closed because it was a public holiday in South Africa. So I just went to a fabric shop and no one could help me so I, we YouTubed how to just pin it. So I was actually in jeans and then when Flem asked me to stand up. I couldn't really stand up. I had to move the camera with me to stand up so that no one knew that it wasn't a full sorry. So Instagram versus reality. But I said my one um, aim at the end of this is I'll wear a yellow sari to the CSK final. If I could be Kim, I'd be a professional golfer. She is a really good golfer, but she just doesn't practice or doesn't play very often. So um, if she practiced and played as much as she could, she could become a very good golfer. Mm, uh, if I had to be Dev, would mm, I don't think cricket. I think I would, I just probably want to just be Dev, as in just the type of person he is, not what he does for a living. I think it's just being who he is and how much people love him. I just want to experience that and just be like a person that goes with the flow rather than one that says no to a lot of things. I know what she's going to say, sometimes I'm on my phone too much. <laughs> Actually wasn't, but that's a good one, thanks. <laughs> uh, my one was dishes in the dishwasher. I'll improve. <laughs> Yeah, so very much so, you know, after a series or a long time away from home, I certainly um, am pretty physically and mentally tired. Yeah, we enjoy going on uh, little getaways. Um, we've got some very close friends in New Zealand that own a house um, in Lake Taupo. And um, yeah, they, they just sort of allow us to stay there whenever, you know, whenever it's free, whenever there's no one staying there. So we try and get there as much as possible. It's really close to the lake, so there's a lot of activities to do there. So playing tennis, playing golf. Um, Brody. Brody, our dog, absolutely loves the lake. So um, that's probably our, our getaway um, as much as yeah. we possibly can. And we, we sort of live for, for going yeah. away. Yeah, we, we would ideally like to sort of wake up whenever we wake up. Um, you know, I've got a nice coffee machine at home now, so I enjoy making coffees. I'll make her tea. So. We have coffee, tea and coffee in bed, chill out, and then obviously Brody will be pretty excited to go for a walk. <laughs> He's a bit bored of sleeping on the bed or sleeping downstairs, so he'll sort of show us that he wants to leave the house, and then we'll think about a place to go. There's obviously a lot of options in Wellington to go visit, so um, yeah, we'll take him for a nice nice hour, hour walk, um, come home, have good feed, good lunch, and then just chill out, have a nice afternoon nap, you know, between two and three ideally. <laughs> and then, yeah, just a nice good Sunday dinner. And see the neighbors, see some friends. Walk Brody and again. And maybe take Brody for another walk or just chill. It was challenging in, in the beginning because she didn't know a lot about the game. For me to try and start explaining to her the rules about cricket and the real basics was quite frustrating because I just take it for granted that everyone knows and understands stands the game. but. Um, that initial period was a bit challenging and a bit tiring, but then once she started to understand it, then it was probably the, the advanced side of things of explaining, okay, right, you know, the mental challenges as cricketers we face, you know, how it puts us under pressure as players, how it can potentially make us happy one day and, you know, sad the next and 
Um, you sort of, as cricketers, we all know you ride those waves. At times, you either get a bit too high or you can get a bit low. So, the nice thing is, sh she kind of understood that. And then what she's done is she's actually helped me sort of, sort of stay a little bit more level. So over time, I'm not really riding those highs too much, and I'm not, you know, riding those lows. On the flip side to that, so. Um, yeah, I've been pretty thankful that she actually gets that side of the game now and, and helps me sort of just ride that wave however it's going. So I was marketing manager for an IT company, but in order to come here I kind of resigned. But I have got plans that I do want to study to be a teacher. I think that's ultimately my passion that I do want to do in the future. So take the rest of the year or figure out what it is and then start and just do it. Luckily in New Zealand, I just have to do a one year course because I've got a degree and then be a teacher. I think it's always been something I've wanted to do. So I'm very lucky and fortunate enough that we're in the situation I can take a bit of time away from work, but also follow my passion going forward. <laughs> Me. Dev. Me, yeah, potentially. Oh, that's a. That's an interesting one because we play rock, paper, scissors before. Tea and coffee in the morning. Tea and coffee in the morning. He has to make tea and coffee. And more often than not, I reckon it's probably me. Let's see. We'll, we'll let's see. Are you ready? I'm going to win this one. Uh, you got it. Get Luckily it. for nothing. <laughs> Both of us. Both of us are quite neat. Kim does the cleaning though, <laughs> which is great. But we like um, it. We, we like, like it. We, we like it tidy. House. Yeah, we, not, we like it tidy. Yeah. What's my proudest achievement? 200 at Lords. Yep. On debut. I'd probably say that's right, yeah. What is my favourite food or cuisine? What's your favourite food or cuisine? Um, I'd say Italian food, pizza. Yeah. Uh, what is something that always makes me smile or laugh? Brody. Yeah, 100%. Seeing Brody. <laughs> Love Brody. <laughs> what is my favourite memory of us together? Probably when we got engaged in Mount Lyford, maybe. Yep. Uh, one habit of mine that you don't really like? Nail biting. Mm, yeah, 100%. What's my favourite hobby or activity? I'd say probably going on on a walk, on, on awesome. a good walk, maybe with Brody or... I'd say, yeah. Yeah. What about DIY? Where I spend all the oh, money? Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> your number one. <laughs> she loves to do a lot of work at home. Okay, what do you think is my biggest weakness? People pleasing. Why? you just the guy that goes with the flow rather than sometimes saying no. Okay. What's my dream travel destination? Isn't it like, um, it's the fancy place, like the Maldives or something like that, right? Yeah, anywhere where there's beach. Yeah. Okay. It's almost what we do with five questions. Okay, well, we'll try to do it in 20 then. Do you want me to go first as guessing or telling you guessing? No, no, I'll guess. Okay. Um, tell me. Tell it's going to be a person. Okay, we'll make it harder, a person. Okay, is this person famous? Yes. Is this person a male? Yes. That's two. Is this person a cricket player? No. Is this person a footballer? No. Is this person a golfer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> golfer. Is this person a right-handed golfer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is this person American? No. Is this person South African? No. Is this person New Zealand? No. 
Okay. Is he Australian? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Adam Scott? Yeah. <laughs> 11 questions. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> okay, go. All right. Um, I think people's tougher than places because places is. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a person. I'm gonna go a person. Yeah. I'm gonna go a person. Okay. Um, I've got a person. Go. Okay. Is it a male? Yes. Is he famous? Oh. Yes. Is he a sportsman? Yes. Is he a golfer? No. Thank you. Cricketer? Yes. Is he West Indian? No. Ooh. South African? No. New Zealand? No. Australian? No. Oh my god. <laughs> English? Yes. That's 10 questions. And you got it in 11? I got it in 11. So, okay, this is the competitive side of me now. I've got one question not to be worse than you. Does he play IPL? Yes. <laughs> I should have. Is it Moe Nelly? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I should have done it in here. I thought it would be.